Hey guys, welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James. Today we are going to be having a very, very quick look, very brief video, uh, talking about strap bosses, how we install them, uh, why you install them, and best practices that I always use to getting them in and that sort of thing. Um, this is a simple job, really. This shouldn't take you five seconds to really learn, as long as you follow a few little tips that I'm going to give you now. Please remember to follow us over on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter. What? And we'll have a little look from there. I don't know if this is going to go out midweek or on a Saturday, but hey, it probably won't matter for most of you because you'll be watching that after the fact anyhow, won't you? Anyway, enjoy the video, guys. I'll see you soon. And remember to hold tight. See you later. By the way, if you follow us on Instagram, you're going to see stories like this with Mr. G. How sexy can filming some world boss installations actually be? I mean, pretty sexy, I think. Fun, mate. What's that hat you got? Plumber hat. Are you, bro? Give poor. Poor. Now, what the other poor? Other poor. Good boy. Say hello to everyone, Jacob. Here's some cats. guys let's have a very quick close look at the boss itself usually now what we've got in here at the moment is an inch and a quarter oh have i put the wrong one in here you know what oh no i haven't firstly you tend to get two types of boss uh we've got an inch and a half one here and then we've got an inch and a quarter one here the inch and a quarter one you're going to use more for um just a basin waste if it's on its own like a hand basin not a kitchen one kitchen ones are going to want this one here also you'll probably use this if you're going to be taking uh, a condense from a boiler or that sort of thing and they're really really handy oh bloody hell now as you're probably aware i'm going to show a t-branch appearing right next to me now uh, you can drill out the small sections of the side of them to boss into stuff but what we're going to show you today is how to drill out a small bit of pipe that we have actually here for this job the job here itself is we've got a elbow coming out of the wall with a socket on it uh, we've got a small stub of pipe going into there and then we're going to have a toilet a pan connector going into one end but on top of going into that i'm going to drill my hole we're going to boss into this pipe and that's going to take our kitchen waste and also a little hand basin waste as well you might have seen the video a couple of weeks ago when we were putting the six meter length of pipe and that's what this is going into here i'm just being sort of a bit sneaky really and using the studio that we've got to show you as many little plumbing jobs you know as i possibly can um, I think they're going to help a lot of you guys out who are just apprentices and also just trying to figure out, oh, I want to boss into something. Let's show you on a small piece of pipe. I mean, you, you can obviously do this on a six metre length, a three metre length, whatever length you like. But you're only ever going to be working on one foot's worth, aren't you, while you're cutting that hole in there. So let's do that now. So the first thing you need to do is choose the right size hole saw. Now that is defined by these little lugs here. Often newbies, noobs or whatever you want to call them, I'll just start calling them youngins or whatever. They will get a hole saw that's the size of the pipe and drill that through. Doesn't work. What that's going to do is hold the strap boss off the pipe itself. So what you want to do is, where's my drill? Oh yeah, number one, look how cool this uh, auger is at releasing bits. Look. Off. That's it. I'm so, I love that. So look, if we look at this one here nice and closely, the jaw for this is exactly the right width for those lugs there. Can you see that? So when we cut our hole in a minute, we know that our uh, lugs are gonna go straight into the pipe itself. And the good thing about us using a short bit of pipe is hopefully I'm gonna be able to show you that from the inside too. So once you've selected the right drill bit size, or your right bit, all we need to do is prepare exactly where we wanna put our hole. That's pretty easy really, let's face it. You already know it roughly. So thinking about it in a logical way, you can put your strap on here where you want it to stick out, make a little mark there, with a pencil or anything, anything that will make a mark, and then you can get down to actually drilling your hole. Okay, so let's do that now. Great ocean, oh, great Right, so we're gonna be using our inch and a half one on this. So very simple. Obviously, I've got all that lovely sticker under there. Can't really be bothered with anyone seeing that. So I'm just gonna make my mark on here like so. And then really, we're gonna be going into the center of that. Now, this is a super, super easy part of the job. Pop your little thing on there. 
Right, once you're into this pipe here, the one thing you want to make sure, right, if you're on a vertical stack drilling into one of these like that, okay, for God's sake, <laughs> make sure that this doesn't fall off and drop down that stack. That's all I'm going to say. If you need a bit of setter tape or something like that to be sure, then by all means do, okay? So let's get a nice little cloth up. Right, so just take it easy, really. Don't have to go too quick. Just take it slow. you'll see that you've got the piece you've cut out just sat here now. So once you've done that, the kind of dodgy bit of the job is pretty much done. You've got nothing more to sort of worry about. Put it this way, you haven't lost, you know, 10 quid's worth of hole saw down the stack and crying for your mama. Now, the next bit that no one ever does, or I never see anyone do, do is prepare the uh, plastic on here to get a better bond with the solvent weld. Because what we need to do, right, we use a solvent weld glue, which, this stuff here, Black Swan, you've probably seen me use this before. I think you're gonna see this at music festivals all over the country soon. This stuff is the strongest solvent glue I've ever smelt. It does actually say this on a lot of products, that you need to prepare the pipe to take solvent weld glue. So you need to etch it, and you can do it with a little bit of wire wool, a little bit of emery cloth, or you can actually buy a special etching solution that you can just paint on. I think McAlpine sell it. Um, you can paint that onto the pipe, but it's just fine if you just grab something like this and give it a good old, a good old edge. And just if you want to make it nice and neat so no one can see, just use your bit of your finger like that. And you see that just lightening up there, just giving us a little key to go on in a minute when we come to put our solvent weld on here. We don't want it to go wrong, do we? The last thing we want. Mm -hmm. So let's have a quick look once we've actually set this on here. Quick thing you want to look at as well is the collar does have a top and a bottom. Now, if we look, this is the top mitt and it's denoted by the fact it says, believe it or not, top. Someone thought out of the box, Oh, burping up a little bit of soup. And there's a tiny, tiny little incline going down back into the pipes, so that's totally normal. These are actually two different parts. So you can buy, the strap boss is the same for everything, but then you can buy an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter actual insert socket to go in there. So hopefully you can see them appearing next to us now, so you can see how they go together and all that. There's also a little notch. Make sure that when you put this in, you've got top there and top there, and that they meet up together. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see that now. So if we look inside here, you'll see that our lugs are sitting perfectly inside that pipe now. That's exactly what we want, okay? That's, that's a good seating that we've got there. Right, so the next bit's easy and can be controversial. <laughs> the thing is, right, is some people don't use salt well for this bit. Some people do use silicon. I mean, there are good products out there at the moment. We're looking at stuff like CT1, Hippo, they both make like a really good strong adhesive sealant thing. I've always used solvent weld, so that's just the way I do it. So we get out our insanely strong glue, okay? And also we just get prepared. We know that to tighten this up in a minute, we're gonna need a nice big flat setted screwdriver. I haven't filled this one up yet. This is the smaller one. And in my next video, I'm gonna be showing you the swap over. Well, basically I'm swapping over all my solder gear out of my old soldering bag into my new tote bag. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna get a load of 15 mil. We've got to get all that pinned to the wall. And we're just gonna talk about soldering because uh, we get asked a lot about soldering by apprentices and we're gonna talk about um, the best practices for that. But anyway, um, let's have a quick go at this. We've, we've got everything ready. We've got our screwdriver here. This was just laying in a big long run of pipe. It would just be in front of us, wouldn't it? Nice and easy to get at. I mean, it's never gonna be round the back, is it? You know, up a set of steps, two and a half meters or something like that. That never happens. Just bring you down like so. So we get out our brush and this at the moment, like I'm gonna be a gibbering idiot in a minute because well, I am anyway, usually, but this this stuff. And we're just gonna paint that solvent weld glue around here. I've said it before in many videos, haven't I? And I'll say it again. Solvent weld glue is cheap and leaks are expensive. And we're also gonna put a little bit around the inside of this, just like that. Uh, I should have just said there, make sure that your fittings that you're putting together are nice and dry. Make sure they're free of debris. Um, we don't wanna get cheese in there, do we? <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to slip my boss 
I'm going to have this way round on here. You do have a little bit of time. You'd have to go like crackers. Try and keep that free off the pipe as much as you can. And then strip that round here. And then push that together like so. And as soon as you possibly can, just get your screwdriver. Get that done up as tight as it'll go. And there we go, that's a nice clean watertight seal there for our boss. Now, just a quick tip here, we've done the strap boss now and effectively this video is kind of over. But here's a few little extra tips for you while you're here. Um, when you push your pipe in, doesn't matter how you cut it, I recommend you just put a little chamfer on that because when you push into this rubber sole here, sometimes that rubber can push out. These are a very good fit. I actually sort of scrape a chamfer off with the Stanley, just like that. And I am gonna put a little, I'm just gonna gob on it a bit. You know what I might do actually? I'm just gonna close my eyes and pretend that I'm not here. I'm just gonna lick it. Emily's off camera at the moment. She liked that, didn't you, Em? A little licky bit. Oh, I oh, didn't glue that one in. Oh my God, this is one of them videos that's going completely mental. I accidentally forgot to glue that in. So doesn't that show you how easy it is to not do something. I'll tell you now actually, quick tip as well, when you are doing joints, always have a felt tip to leave a little mark on them so you know that you've done them. Uh, look, now I can show you, this is how we get these on. God, I'm really glad actually about that because I was gutted that I wasn't gonna be able to show you. There we go, so that gives, just get plenty of that on there, plenty of that on there, and then match top there to the top on here. And there's a small lug just in there, can you see that? And there's also a small little lug just on that and they line up pushing together like so, push it together nice and hard so it all splodges out and quickly, while you've got a few minutes, just run your finger around there and then wipe that on the customer's carpet. Okay, that's the best thing to do. That's where you want to go, don't you? You know, because you want to get called back there because you didn't make an absolute total mess. You shouldn't really use your finger, we all know that, but I do because I'm a naughty person. And there we go, we have now successfully bossed into this lovely bit of four inch pipe. Also, hopefully now, you'll be able to see, when I hold this pipe upright, you see how much of incline there is there. That's how important it is to get the top facing the top. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're doing a top invert, obviously, because as you can see, it doesn't really matter so much. And you could lose a lot of that if you need to be horizontal running away from that in the fittings. But it is important that you get them the right way round if you are gonna be going on a vertical. So it isn't just, you know, namby-pamby stuff that people have said you should do. Definitely take notice of the top marking on the boss, okay? Right then, so this is where our little bit's gonna go, just in here, like so. And what that's gonna do, we're gonna have a toilet sat here, we're gonna have a basin there, or we might have it behind me, I haven't really figured that one out yet. But whatever happens, if the basin's over there, I'm gonna pop a T on this piece, whatever happens. Um, then I can have a lot of rotting bit that way. Um, I can feed, obviously, the basin waste into this, and then pick up the kitchen waste, the kitchen's just behind us through there. I'm gonna be able to run that across the top of that wall and that'll take up into this as well. Something that you need to think about when you're doing this sort of work is just make sure that you've got this cocked up in a nice angle, but not so much it doesn't drain the toilet, but also if you start running water down into this, it doesn't fill up back into the toilet bowl. So the last thing you wanna see is the odd, you know, bit of carrot turning back up. That wouldn't be very nice, would it? I'm gonna pop that on here. I see if I can get that on now. It's a lot easier to lubricate these. Get in there, you! Come on! The usual, get a bit of gob on it. Put a gob on it. Come on. There we go. Lovely. So there you go guys, we all now know how to do one of these, how to do it safely and how not to get completely out while we're doing it. Um, I'm gonna be fitting this in properly, as you can see from a second ago. I just whipped it out so I could do a nice few close-ups of it. Anyway, please follow us on Instagram. Done loads of stories for this video today. So follow us on Instagram, do loads of stuff there, have a great time. Follow us on Snapchat as well. It's amazingly good on a Friday and Saturday night when I'm actually off a tree. Uh, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, the normal ones for normal people. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next video, guys. I'll be doing loads of work over there, getting loads of stuff moved over. Until then, hold tight. See ya! Because if you like this video, click the like and subscribe to see some more. Oh yeah, I teach you where the soil stack and scrub big tea on his belly. Because don't you know, I taught you where the big bamboo goes. Oi.